Apple Line Motorsports here with uh, the first assembly video. I have got piston rings here. Um, I have used them in other builds. Uh, I know they're not factory or OEM, uh, but they have been good to me and I haven't had an issue. So, that being said, they are a cast ring. Um, nothing super fancy, but should be good enough to get the job done. So. Um, I'm holding the cylinders already with a 300 grit straight stone hone, like a three stone hone. So did that. Yeah, basically just sizing the piston rings. Kind of a tedious process. As you can see right here, I uh, 3D printed a piston ring filer. I don't have a hand crank one, so that's the one that I'm gonna use. Um, works on a Dremel with a uh, diamond blade which I already have. Got a piston here uh, to shove the ring down into the cylinder. Uh, make sure it's square. Um, not sure if that's gonna work actually now that I think about it. Yeah so gonna size out the piston rings. Um, I'm waiting on main bolts still. They have they shipped on the 5th of May. Today is now the 17th so they should be here hopefully within a week. <laughs> Um, they should have been here two weeks ago, but anyways, then I will throw everything else together. I've got all the parts ready besides a timing kit that is on order that will be here shortly. Got my cylinder head redone. Um, so I'm going to size up these piston rings, um, make sets out of them uh, for each bore, put them on each corresponding piston, and uh, yeah, hopefully I can get to throwing the rest of this motor together. So let's do it. I figured out what I need for piston ring end gap. Hastings piston rings uh, don't necessarily, they're not necessarily a high performance ring. So finding um, correct end gaps on their website for any sort of forced induction vehicle or anything like that is, I don't think they have it. Um, so I went on to Wiseco, who I've also used in the past. Um, and found their uh, ring gap table, which shows basically um, based on your application, your rough application, it'll show you um, how many thousands of an inch of ring gap you need per inch of cylinder bore. So um, for a street moderate turbo build, they want five thousandths of an inch per inch of cylinder bore diameter. So 81 millimeters is a cylinder bore diameter uh, that is roughly 3.19 inches. So if you times 3.19 times five thousandths of an inch, you're gonna get 0 0.01595. So that's basically 16 thousandths of an inch of ring gap on the top ring. Um, secondary ring, I didn't calculate out actually. But the second ring is at uh, 5.5 thousandths of an inch times diameter. So 3.19 times 0 0.0055 equals 18 thousandths of an inch. Uh, 0 0.017545, we're going to call it 18 thousandths for simplicity's sake. Um, quite a bit easier. I mean, we're not building a NASCAR engine or a Formula One engine, so this will be good for this application. Um, yeah, I will show you what I'm doing to size these and what size they are to begin with. Yeah, so I'm going to start uh, measuring these out and um, pairing them up, not pairing them up, but uh, assigning them cylinders. So cylinder one, your oil or your uh, uh, compression ring, your secondary ring, and then the oil rings, uh, pairing them up or combining them as cylinder one set, cylinder two set, cylinder three set, and so on. Um, you don't want to size these if your cylinder walls are a little bit off, like mine are. I know they are because I hone on them myself. I didn't bring them to a machine shop. Um, sizing them per cylinder is really the best way to do it. Um, you don't want to just size them all in cylinder one to X size, whatever that may be. 
because um, it could be smaller than cylinder two or cylinder three or bigger than cylinder two or cylinder three and that's even worse so um, you don't want too small of a piston ring gap uh, it's just not good look up other videos of what happens um, yeah so I'm gonna size I've got this is the pack of six um, compression rings this is the pack of six secondary rings and then I've also got oil rings here um, they're in a set of three really um, top bottom and then a middle scraper ring um, yeah so I'm gonna get to measuring uh, show you guys what I'm doing I'm just using a feeler gauge basically putting them down in the cylinder with a piston I pop this piston off the rod um, basically with the VR6 it's a little difficult because the cylinder walls are not perpendicular to the deck surface um, because it's got one cylinder head and it's technically a V motor um, so we got a 15 degree V I think it's 15 degree on this generation yeah you can't just push it straight down with the top of the cylinder or the top of the piston and the top of the piston is a little uneven so I popped it off I'm gonna use the bottom of the piston set it in bring it down to probably halfway down the cylinder or so and uh, do my sizing from there so uh, starting a cylinder one up here a cylinder six being back here like I said I'm gonna group them up accordingly and uh, get going so let's do it I'm filing down the piston rings um, when you do that you always want to make sure you're filing away from the ring if that makes any sense so instead of filing uh, towards the rest of the ring you're gonna file away that way if there's any sort of coating on the piston ring it's gonna uh, keep that coating on there um, if you start filing uh, towards the ring itself uh, you have a possibility of knocking that coating off of there, and that's not going to be good for sealing. Um, yeah, and always be really, really careful when filing. Make sure you get all the burrs off. Any burrs on the outside are going to cause cylinder wall scoring, and any burrs on the inside are going to get caught on the piston itself, and it's not going to be a good case. <laughs> video um in the next video i'll be throwing the crankshaft in and uh sizing everything up there so thanks for watching and be sure to like follow and subscribe